What's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got this problem here. So we have this big beam, and we're trying to find the components of the reaction at A and C. So let's go ahead and finish our force body diagram here. So I drew the initial part of it, just basically what we already know, and then we're gonna add some forces to it. So I got the picture here, and let's just go off it. So A and C, they're both pins. So if they're both pins, then there's gonna be two forces at each. So we're gonna say A of X, A of X, A of Y, and there's, of course, that's C, right? Yeah, C of X, and this is C of Y. So now we have four equations, or four unknowns. That's a lot of unknowns. So how are we gonna do this, right? So let's go ahead and, you, before we get overwhelmed, let's try to just do everything that we can do here. So let's start with, we can maybe take a moment, and the moment might be able to help us find things out. So let's start by taking a moment at A. If we take a moment at A, then these two forces get canceled out. We know this, we know this. C of Y is gonna be in the equation, but C of X is not gonna be in the equation because it's acting on the X axis where A is. So if we take some of the moments at A, we can find C of Y. So let's go ahead and do that. So some of the moments at A, we know it's equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So what do we have? We have the 600 Newton force. It's gonna rotate this direction, so that's clockwise. So we're gonna subtract 600 times its distance in the y direction, which is three. So then we have this 400 Newton meter force acting. So it's a weight of 400 Newton meters dispersed over these three meters. So what weight's it gonna make this one act? Well, it's gonna push this way, which is gonna go clockwise again. So it's gonna be another subtraction thing. So let's write out the units of this. So it's 400 Newton meters per meter, so then we have to multiply by the three meters to cancel out the meters. So this is the force here that that acts on, and then we have to multiply by the distance. So the distance, it's acting evenly over this three meters, so you know it's gonna act at the center of that, which is 1.5 meters, 1.5. And then now what we have left is the C of Y, so the C of Y is pushing upward. So the C of Y is gonna make us wanna go counterclockwise, and then we're gonna actually add the C of Y and that means it's just gonna be C of Y times its distance in the X direction, which we know is that three meters because 1.5 plus 1.5 is three meters. So now you wanna solve for C of Y. Solving for C of Y, you get that C of Y is equal to 1,200 pounds. Pounds, humans. Why am I writing pounds? Oops, it's okay. I got pounds on my notes, hopefully I'm not confusing anything. So yeah, that's how you find C of Y. So going back. Now let's find some of the forces in the Y direction. So we, if we find A of Y, then we can find C of Y. Or if we found C of Y, we can find A of Y because we know there's only two forces acting. But some of the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. So we know there's A of Y, and we know there's C of Y. And then so the 400 Newton meter force acts downward so like we said again, 400 newtons per meter, and then we have to multiply it by the meters at which it acts, which is three meters. The meters cancel. You're gonna get that A of Y is equal to negative C of Y, which is 1,200, plus 4, 000, or 400 times three, which is 1,200. And you're gonna find that A of Y is equal to zero. So there you go, we're halfway there. We found two of the forces, so let's go ahead and find C of X and A of X. So now, unfortunately, no matter what we do with this diagram, we're never gonna be able to find A of X and C of X. Um, because if you take the moment around here, of course, C of X, A of X is gonna be here. You can't take the sum of forces in the X direction. You're just gonna end up being confused and you're not gonna be able to find it because you can only have, you know, you have two unknowns. So an easier way to do this is we can split it up. So what we want to do is we want to take one side. So let's take one of the sides. So let's see, what are we doing here? Yeah, so we're gonna take one of the sides. So let's take AB, let's look at AB. So we're gonna redraw this with just AB. So B goes over and it goes back down. So here's A, here's B, this is 1.5 meters. This is three meters. Of course, we're sitting in cinema, we have the 600 Newton force. And you could do this with the other side too. You get the same answer, but I chose to do this side just because it's, I don't know, on the left. So of course we still have this 400 Newton per meter force acting down. 
We still have a y. Still have a of x. And then, of course, this cb is going to act on this system. So, you know, we don't know which way it's going to act. So let's go ahead and draw that. So we know that it's going to basically be pushing against it here. So we can go ahead and just assume that I'm going to draw it this direction. So we can label this c of x. Because the, whatever c of x is acting here is going to be acting here too, against it. So I draw it going this way. It doesn't make a difference which way you add it, but you're going to maybe end up with a negative or a positive number, and you just have to understand that. So I'll make sure you understand what I'm talking about later when we get to that. So I think this is everything we need here. So let's take, let's try to find a of x. So if we're looking for a of x, we might want to take the moment around b. If we take the moment around b, then c of x is not there, and it's just a of x. So let's do that. So some of the moments around b, which is here, is equal to. So we have this 400 newton meter force. And which way? It's going to push here. It's going to make us want to go counterclockwise. So we're going to add that. 400 newtons per meter times its total amount of meters. So 1.5 meters now, because that's the only thing we have here. And then we have to multiply by its distance. So instead of uh, center, so the center of action is going to be 0.75 by half of this 1.5 because it's distributed equally. So then we have a 600 newton meter force, or 600 newton force, but it's acting against B, so it's not gonna have any effect on the moment. So we do have A of Y, so A of Y is making you wanna go up here, which is gonna be uh, clockwise, so we're gonna have to subtract the A of Y. And then we have to multiply A of Y by its distance in the X direction, which is 1.5. So then all we have left is a of x, so a of x is going to push this way, which is going to make us want to go counterclockwise, so we're going to add a of x. So I ran out of space, but it's going to be a of x, distance in the y direction, which is 3. And of course it's all equal to 0. So if you rearrange this equation, you're going to get 3 a of x, just by moving a of x to the other side, is equal to, and then plugging in a of y, which you found earlier. So a of y we found is zero, so this actually doesn't even count in the equation. It's just equal to this here, which is um, 450, but it's a negative 450 because we moved that a of x over. So by the way, three, you're gonna get a of x is equal to negative 150. So that means that a of x actually is pushing this direction. So if you get a negative number for your force, don't worry about it. It basically means that you drew your force body diagram wrong. It means that a of x is actually pushing to the left. So when we write that down, I'm just going to write down a of x is equal to 150 uh, newtons, but it's pointing to the left. Okay, cool. So then, pretty much all that's left is to take some of the forces in the x direction. All right, because we found a of x, so then we know 600 and c of x, so let's do it. Some of the forces in the x is equal to zero. So we found a of x is 150 to the left, so we're going to have to subtract 150, then plus 600 newtons pointing to the right, and then plus c of x. And I think that's everything, right? So then, uh, of course, move c of x over, you're going to get c of x is equal to 150 minus 600, and you'll find c of x is equal to negative 450. So again, we have a negative thing here. So if c of x is negative, that means we drew a force body diagram wrong. That means that c of x is actually pushing against it, which makes sense. So c of x is 450 pounds to the left. So let me write that, c of x, 450 newtons to the left. I keep saying pounds because I wrote pounds in my notes, but I mean newtons when I say that. So there you go, that's all of our components. So uh, this question is pretty tricky, but it's really the same as any other question. Just about making the right cut and analyzing some of the forces and moments. So. If you have any trouble with these kind of questions, uh, I have a whole lot of examples on my channel, so feel free to check me out. Uh, I have a playlist on statics, that's a lot of questions. And yeah, so I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.